Right, Boris Johnson's final weekend in office as voting closes in the race to choose his successor, with the winner announced on Monday. Joining me now is the author and political journalist Andrew Jimson, who's written a biography of Boris Johnson and is publishing another one later this year. Also joining me is Caroline Slocock. She was private secretary to two prime ministers, Margaret Thatcher and John Major, and is now director of the Civil Exchange Think Tank. Andrew Jimson, he's gone but not gone. I mean, he's still going to be a presence in British politics, just like Trump is in America. He's had a genius for putting himself at the centre of the story ever since 1989, when he went to Brussels to cover Jacques Delors' plan to take over Europe, as he described it. So, yes, of course, it, it, it would be completely out of character for him to go away, find a nice house in the country, do good work in the local church, and never be heard of again. Of course, we shall, of course we'll go on hear, hearing from him. He sees himself as a sort of a Churchillian figure who could, could come back, doesn't he? I think he's more of a Disraelian figure, actually, but uh, he certainly sees himself... Well, Harold Wilson came back. Lots of... In, in British politics, there have been many, many prime ministers who've been prime minister more than once with a gap. So that... Although, although admittedly, they've usually remained party leader, and he hasn't. But nevertheless, it's perfectly feasible in our system to come back, yes. Caroline Slocott, what does it tell you about British politics at the moment? that after everything that Boris Johnson has done, that's a live discussion that he could come back? Well, I think it's absolutely extraordinary. The um, uh, Conservative Party seems to almost be airbrushing out the 50 ministers who resigned over Bonson, Boris Johnson's um, behaviour, not just party gate and breaking of rules, but also his incompetence as a prime minister, his failure to deliver. Uh, but I don't think the people have forgotten. If you looked at some of those um, leadership debates in the early stages, the audiences were really stony faced. And these were um, swing voters with the Channel 4 debate. Uh, they were really stony faced uh, in response to what the candidates were saying and said uh, quite clearly that they really cared about integrity. And I think that um, uh, Boris Johnson is likely to be remembered as the man who gave us Partygate, the first prime minister who uh, actually was criminally sanctioned. But if, if um, Liz Truss takes over next week, I mean, what has changed about the nature of British politics? You know, is it, is it, is it the end of populism or, you know, or, or does all of that just sort of carry on? Well, I think uh, Johnson has set a low bar in, in terms of uh, respecting democratic norms from proroguing parliament to um, obviously party gate, um, you know, the Owen Patterson affair. Uh, but he's also started to um, reduce some of the checks and balances on how government operates. And what I see with Liz Truss is that she's really going to continue with that. She said, for example, that she doesn't think she necessarily needs an ethics advisor uh, because she knows the difference between right and wrong. And uh, I think that she is going to be quite a populist leader in the same stable as Boris Johnson. And she's also said that she didn't think that he should have resigned, that he'd made some mistakes, but he was uh, basically a, a brilliant prime minister. Um, so I don't think that lessons have been learnt, and it's actually quite worrying, I think, and for our democracy. Yes. Uh, what do you make of the I, I, I disagree with almost everything that Caroline has said, actually. He has been thrown out. I mean, our system has worked. Um, there has been a sanction. He, he was in a very precarious state and his own party decided that it, he wouldn't do anymore. But he's but... been replaced by somebody who doesn't criticise anything about him. Oh, well, <laughs> it's always quite difficult to know what to say about your predecessor, isn't it? I, I have some sympathy with her. She shouldn't really get distracted into that. She has to know what to say about Margaret Thatcher. Knowing what to say about Boris Johnson is a very, very difficult But how do you raise problem. standards in, in public life if you don't well, criticise the there falling is, standards? There is. Before? I mean, it's, of course, it's a very mixed record. The bad is, is bad, very bad, but the good is remarkable. And Boris Johnson got Brexit done. And if he hadn't, I mean, the whole political class had promised that this referendum meant something and then tried a very large number of members of parliament um, who were quite entitled, to, but they decided to, that that no longer applied, and they were going to try and stop Brexit. And he got Brexit done. And if he hadn't, I think our system would be much more discredited than it is. I mean, he, he got Brexit but done up to a point, didn't he, Car Caroline Slocock, in that we're still negotiating the future of Northern Ireland and the, and the Irish border. But, I mean, what, what do you make about this sort of transition in that, I mean, you know, it has been known for party leaders um, to change uh, who they really are after they become elected. Um, and people say that about Keir Starmer, and I wonder if they'll say it about 
Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak whoever wins? Well, um, there was that point in one of the debates um, when um, somebody said, well, the real Liz Truss, um, please stand up. And obviously she's got a record of uh, opposing Brexit and then supporting Brexit. And um, perhaps it's not really clear what she believes and what her values are. So I think that's true. But there is a bit of a, you know, a, 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 there are signs that she is in the same stable, as I said earlier, as Boris Johnson. Um, you know, for example, she issued a press release in the middle of the campaign saying she was going to cut um, public servants pay um, in the regions and then within 24 hours said that, uh, you know, she simply it had been misrepresented and that isn't what she was planning to do and there it was in black and white, you know, it's another sign of that kind of post truth world. Um, and I think that the kind of big sweeping promises that she's making have something of the hallmark of those sort of oven ready deals that Boris Johnson uh, promised, you know, the um, the Brexit deal that is still not finished, the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, bill that is undoing our word internationally in terms of a treaty, the the, the ready-made um, plan on social care, which never really fully materialised and has been partly undone by um, this Truss's promise to change the tax that was going to partly underpin that. Um, I think, you know, she too is making big promises, but does she have the skill to deliver? And maybe she does. Maybe she's going to have more attention to detail than Boris Johnson. But I think that um, a lot of his own people have said that he was good at campaigning, but not so good on delivery. Andrew Jimson, I mean, do you, do you think he's waiting for this trust to make a mess of it and for the party to say, bring back Boris Johnson? Or, or you know, is it more likely that he could come back after an election loss? Well, he what, what's the most likely scenario for you? He became Tory leader in the first place. I mean, they did look around for a stop. Boris candidate for a long time, and Theresa May yeah. was, was there still to, to stop him getting it. But, well, but do you think once it's they got under he could become leader again before the next election? Very unlikely. I think they'll have to be in desperate trouble again. Um, well, they... perhaps, perhaps they will be. <laughs> well, they've, they've got an economic <laughs> crisis coming down. They've got a very severe economic difficulties. Yes. So it's and he's what he's fifty-eight. I mean, that's no age, is it? Um, Palmerston became Prime Minister for the first time at the age of 70. Um, he's, got, he's got a lot of miles left in him, I think. Um, and he can have a rest. And he is the Tory party's great campaigner. And that's, that was very, very important, both in the referendum and in the general election. We, we must leave it there. Andrew Jimson, Caroline Slocock, thank you both.